welcome back. Well, we've got Jeff Parker with us, who's going to tell you about something I know most of you are going to be very excited about. So, Jeff, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Hey, good morning. Welcome to. Um, glad to be here on Friday morning. I should say welcome because, I, like, I'm the host, right? <laughs> he wants to be the host now, don't you? That'll be great. We'll just so toss it to you. That's okay. <laughs> Yeah, so we hear there's some good news about the golf course, so very excited. So tell us what's happening. Okay, so the first thing was the um, on the governor's list of what activities could happen under phase one of his um, rollout was certain outside activities like hiking and walking, and golf was added with certain limitations. Okay. And so we began the process of gearing up for reopening the golf course, which we now have scheduled for May 11th. Okay. Monday. Um, it's going to uh, get our team together this week, get it all prepped and ready to go. And they've been working on that real hard over the last couple of weeks to get the golf course in, in its great shape. Mm -hmm. And then getting the crew back ready with regards to how we're going to operate. And that's what I wanted to talk about a little bit. So on our website um, today will be all our new rules with regards to how we're going to operate so people can go on and get that. It's pretty okay. extensive. And the reason it's, it's extensive is, again, we're meeting the protocols from the state and Orange County Health right. with regards to operation. So how you're going to have to call in in advance to get your tea time and, and register stat, okay. how you're going to have to pay with, um, with a credit card or put one on, on the system so that we have it on okay. a continual basis. So it's right. a non-touch type of situation. We're going to require masks to be worn when you first get there before you tee off. Sure. Once you tee off, obviously, you wouldn't have to at that point in time. Mm -hmm. And the key will be Tom and his crew will be uh, with the expectation of social distancing. You're only going to allow four people to a group. Um, individual golf carts, unless you have a partner. So it'll be either four golf carts or if there is a partner involved, they can share a golf cart. The key is... Um, making sure that social distancing is there, making sure all of the activities are not touching stuff. So right. the interesting thing is obviously we'll kind of invert, raise up the cup. So you won't be putting into the cup and reaching down in there to get your golf ball. It'll just be hitting the cup. The flags, oh. the flags will be still there. You'll never have to remove the flag. Okay. So there won't be any touching with regards to activities That's like that. That's interesting. And so the whole point is you know, individually keep your own ball. Don't be sharing a ball, that type of thing. We don't want any um, sharing of activities because that's what could potentially spread the, the virus. Right. So with these protocols, um, we believe that we can be safe for the community, get the activity open again. Um, there will be some changes, like I said, in the sense okay. of the process of how people can go through and get signed up. One of the things I wanted to mention was there are different times here for um, getting your registration or your tea time in mm -hmm. a week in advance. Monday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday tea times can be scheduled seven days in advance okay. by calling at, at 6 o'clock and 6.15 in the morning at, by calling 949-597-4336. That's the number okay. at the clubhouse. Okay. And then Tuesday and Wednesday tea times can be made on the Saturday in advance of that. At, at 10 o'clock in the morning by calling that same number, the 597-4336. Okay. Okay. And that's how people are gonna get their tea times. And then what's real important is those residents are gonna have to have their identification number because this is residents only operation. Oh, got it. There will be no guests at this point in time. All right. um, again, we don't wanna see the impact of people coming into the community. So it's, it's just for our residents at this point in time. Right, and, and I want to just kind of go over some of the things that you mentioned. So, for instance, when someone has a cart uh, and they have a partner, you're talking about someone that lives within the home with them, That's correct? That's correct. A living okay. partner, as we de gotcha. de defined it, a spouse or somebody significant that's living with them. Okay, perfect. I just wanted to clarify that yeah. because that, of course, you said Good guess. Point. Good point. No guess. Uh, then the phone number is the one that we've been showing. So there'll be no online uh, tea times right now. Correct. Okay. Now, you also mentioned where they can get all this information. So is that the LagunaWoodsVillageAlerts.com website? Yeah, our, our normal. Perfect, website. the normal one. Okay, great. Good. And you haven't gone over all of the restrictions, the majority of the restrictions. Those is there the, anything the, those else? Those are the main Oh, main is that ones. it? Okay. I, you know, I did want to mention that the, the driving range and the PAR 3 will be open oh, good. At, at the same time. 
Okay. Same kind of restrictions. Yes. Uh, the spacing at the driving range. So there will be limited access at the driving range. Be aware of that. We can't have be people piling up. So the key is once you're done, leave, exit, go over to the golf course if you have a tee time. Mm -hmm. um, but there will be limited space there because we're going to distance out. So you won't have all the spaces at the driving range right. be available. Right. So that's going to limit that access. Again, there will be a credit card type payment mm -hmm. to, to get that access to the to the golf balls. Mm -hmm. And then with the par three, the same thing. It's, it's a walk up. It's not, you know, people don't uh, use carts there. But again, the social distancing is important. The same amount of people right. limitation on how many can be in a group. And when you're going up to pay there, again, remember the social distancing. Remember to wear a mask in and around right. when you're paying and when you're checking in. And then once you're on the golf course, you can remove your mask. Now, let's talk about the responsibility of, you know, the staff uh, at the golf course. So would if someone came to the golf course and they had a reservation, but they did not have a mask, so what, what's going to happen there? Well, basically, the, the purpose of the mask is just when they're first getting there right. um, and, and congregating. So we're, we're going to, obviously, our staff will be... Um, indicating to them that if they could lose potentially lose their tea time if they're not following the rules okay. and so that's why it's so important to, for them to have their identification to follow the rules or potentially you're gonna lose your tea time okay and I wanted to say that because we have made every effort to make sure that everyone uh, in the village has a mask so there really should be no excuse not to have one at this point that's how we see it yeah um, and, and it's really about keeping not only you safe but everybody else safe. Exactly, right exactly. Well, that is great news. I think it makes all of us feel a little bit better that we're making some progress to just kind of come out of this stay at home thing because I think people are just, we're just going crazy and we really want to be outside. And, and, I, and I understand that. And, and one of the difficulties and one of the emails uh, that we got, get constantly is what about the other activities? When yeah. are they going to open up? Uh, one of the things I wanted to mention was that um, and I'll just show a picture of it. This is a, um, a, the plan that the governor came out with with regards to his phasing, and that's on uh, ca.gov, um, coronavirus19. And he talks about this phasing thing. And if you go on that website, you'll see all of the activities, outside activities that are allowed right now. Okay. But two of them that we get constantly getting calls on, swimming and tennis, mm -hmm. are not on that list at this point in time. Mm -hmm. There has been talk. Um, if you're, if you have your own personal tennis court, that's obviously sure. fine, mm -hmm. and your own personal pool, that's fine. But when you're talking about a setting that we have here in the village, tennis and, and outdoor pickleball and those are not on the list yet. Mm -hmm. We anticipate that the governor, probably by the 15th of May, is going to start to move in that second phase, okay. and we're hopeful that those activities can then be considered at that point in time. Yeah. It's a little trickier, you know, you've got people who are together, uh, doubles versus singles, and I mean, in your close contact holding a ball, I one, mean, there's... Yeah, one ball, yeah, and yeah. it's going back there's and a, forth. There's a lot, lot more to that rather than golf. So good. Well, making progress nonetheless, so that's awesome. Good. Okay. Thanks for that. That's good. Uh, now, I know that real estate agents became an essential um, type of, of, I guess, business. Right. So now it's gone a step further that's opening things up a little bit better. Right. So, um, again, when we um, started to put restrictions in there, one of the things that we did was not allowing the open houses the, and those type of activities because what we were seeing was a lot of people coming into the village that, mm -hmm. one, um, we didn't know, they didn't know if we had been tested or not tested or any of those type of things. So there was a big concern about that. Right. So we put a restriction on that as of May 1st. We went back and evaluated it given where the state is at. And we also evaluated what we're looking at in the number of units. A lot of the units that are being shown or for sale are empty. They're, oh. they're not occupied. Okay. And so given that structure, we believe that if we allowed, um, and we are allowing starting May 1st, for real estate agents to show property by appointment only. Mm -hmm. okay. That way they're not doing open houses where you know we're getting a lot of people coming in. But if you want to show a house, you can now start doing that May 1st by doing it by appointment only. There are restrictions yes. there too. And, yes. and a couple of them are following state guidelines with the California Association of Realtors have a, an amendment that you sign right. off on. And then also with that, there is actually some rules with regards to the social distancing, wearing face coverings while you're in 
the activity, mm -hmm. washing your hands and cleaning up afterwards. Yeah. So those policies are still in place and are, are really expected to be followed. So we'll watch that carefully, make sure that we're not seeing all of a sudden an increase in activity that overwhelms our community. Exactly, and we've actually spoken to a few real estate agents here in the community, and they are very aware. And you know, they of course don't want to not be able to show a house, so it seems like they're going to be following the rules. And, and we want that because obviously it's a good economic thing for the community. Yeah. We you know we thrive on having um, real estate sales here. Mm -hmm. It's important for our infrastructure, and it's important to, for the improvement of the village. Right. Excellent. Uh, and then you've got a few numbers to uh, share with us? Yes, unfortunately, uh, I would say uh, that word in that the numbers went up quite dramatically. Um, we saw yesterday 145 new cases in Orange County, okay. the highest spike that they've seen since we've been recording it. All right. Um, the, also, the, the amount of people that are hospitalized right now is at 190, which is the highest number that we've seen. So again, I think that's reflective. We've talked about it reflective testing. of sure. testing first mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and then starting the treatment process. But if the if a person gets sick enough, they're having to go into the hospital. I think that's that fourth level. But increased testing is going to increase the results. Right. Um, that's good in some ways. Obviously, it's kind of sad that we're seeing that much of an increase. The village still is being very, very good and keeping in their low numbers. And I think that's one of the things to be proud of. I did hear this morning, though, out of Orange County that one of the things that concerns me is that kind of rest homes or nursing homes mm -hmm. has had a big jump. Yeah. Um, there was like four nursing homes that had a COVID-19 cases, went up to nine. Mm -hmm. And so, again, it's our population base right. that, that is high risk, not necessarily that we're congregated like a nursing home, no, but yeah. the fact that you get into a high risk age group, it can spread pretty dramatically. Right, exactly. And they are in a little bit closed, more closed quarters as well. Uh, one thing that you can do on the website, which is the uh, the COVID one that we share all the time, mm -hmm. OCHealthInfo.com, is you can find the numbers per city, but as well as the age groups too. And and yes, while our community is in that higher percentage, it's still a broad number, oh, yeah. meaning you've got 16% or 17%. I mean, it's not like 50% are in this age group. So don't be too worried about it. I mean, take it all you know in as a whole. It is. And it's yeah. important to look at it from that perspective. I think the it, where it's showing up again and why we're so cautious here is that when it does get into our age group, the impact seems to be much more severe. Sure. Exactly. Exactly. Well, good. Well, thank you. Great information. And I wanted to mention one other thing. Yes. I think on Monday we're going to have uh, Carlos Rojas, our, our, our uh, security director, um, come in and speak to you. Um, we, we thought that would be important for him to not only get on TV and show his face because uh, he's new to the organization, but also I think he has some information about what he's doing working with the Orange County Sheriff's Department and his team to make exactly. the community safe. Yep, we have a, we have a meeting with him, uh, interview with him, so that'll be great. And uh, like, like you said, he hasn't really been on, but he's gonna talk a lot about, like you said, security and things that they're doing here. Uh, and just kind of lay out a plan, I think. I think that's great. So, All right, well, good, well, thank you. Have a great weekend. All right, you too. All right. And stay tuned right after we take a break. We're gonna talk about masks, as if we haven't talked about them enough. Stay tuned.